What is going on? Charles Botenston here from BPI, and today we're going to be talking about making an offer. There's obviously a lot of aspects within the real estate industry that a lot of people are saying, well, I could easily, you know, discover the property, which is great because it's all on Street Easy. You could find out comparables because it's all on Street Easy. You could see what's sold, what's in contract. You can kind of narrow it down. And then when you start becoming a veteran at open, open houses, you understand, well, the view is probably going to be terrible because they're not actually showing it. Or through the floor plan, I understand that the living room is going to be a lot smaller or the bedroom the, the closet's not that big and I don't think I could fit all my stuff in there so you become a veteran at that obviously you're working with a real estate agent even if you're not highly recommend that you pick someone up right before the offer I get that a lot and it's it's a conversation that I have to have with the listing agent so in other words I get, I get a call and and I didn't even know someone was maybe even looking for real estate because this is the thing is that a lot of people they want to find out what they can actually get for their money so they maybe talk to a bank hopefully talk to a bank but a lot of times they don't and then they come to me and they say hey listen I discovered this property and we have to go all the way through the beginning especially if you're going into a co-op especially if you're gonna be financing we got to make sure that your mortgage is right that the interest rate is right that you're happy with the monthlies that you can obviously get through the board debt to income ratio so this is really the offer 101 here in New York City so this is gonna be a little bit different a lot of people ask for an inspection so we'll start with that we'll start with pre offer uh, an inspection is not necessary unless you're actually having a buying a townhouse or building or retail or commercial space you know things that you're going to be having more than just your primary or an investment home or PA terrace so in other words anything within the four walls of your home as you know you have homeowners insurance so that's pretty much going to be covered mostly everything obviously if something breaks that you need to replace like a refrigerator that's all on you but I mean if there's a leak from upstairs to, to your apartment or the radiator blows uh, a gasket or the windows left open in the the AC that was in in the window uh, bus open and it flood and I've seen all this and it floods the apartment I was actually here's just a, a quick story we were doing I was doing a walkthrough on behalf of someone else and the the agent called me and he said listen it's vacant it's always been vacant we are closing tomorrow just stop by you know take over the walkthrough he was away and I said oh of course you know so I walk in with them and the entire floor is rippled and I'm like thinking this is interesting I guess they're gonna have to redo the floors and the buyer goes what the heck is that sure enough window was left open by a painter and that broke the radiator and someone wasn't there or they got there too late and it just completely flooded the apartment it buckled all the floors that's something that you don't expect and most of the time unfortunately something like that that was human error so obviously that's paid for by the homeowner or in this case you know the homeowner gave them credit so they could still close and whatever but and then outside of that it's usually by the condo or the co-op co association with the windows the roof the facade you know the brickwork things like that so an inspection is not not necessary now let's go into pricing comparables it's not known as an exactable an exactable is this exact home this exact location this exact condo right here that's an exactable even if it was one floor above or one floor below it's probably going to differ on the renovations the view it could be even ceiling height it could be even the layout of the apartment so you can't really it's a comparable price per square foot comparable but the biggest thing is a lot of people they'll, they'll come to me and obviously as a buyer you want to get the lowest price possible so you get all the comparables that have nothing to do with the actual home that I'm listing and they say well look at this one bedroom I'm like that doesn't have outdoor space we have outdoor space or that one is a walk-up we have an elevator and it's sort of similar it's sort of not but on the owner side they're obviously looking to get the highest price so you have to look at the comparables that are trying to get you the highest price obviously you know size we, we've done that so number one is the price the price has to be right and the best way to to kind of gauge it is depending on the amount of days on the market and if there was any other offers and everything like that you, you kind of want to make that initial phone call right, to the listing agent and say hey listen you know we're, we're looking to move forward we're probably going to write something today tomorrow in writing but I just wanted to get a gauge did the owner you know kind of indicate is there a bottom line did they already reject offers are there any current offers you want to go in and not just email your offer and then they call you and they say actually we have a contract out we're signing today so you want to make that initial phone call and obviously price is the first thing then you have to go into the documents so the documents the first one is the Rebney form 
Real Estate Board of New York, R-E-B-N-Y. Uh, on our website, you can download that. And essentially, it's just a complete snapshot of your financial picture. It's how much money you make, whether that's through dividends or assets. You know, you also have liabilities. What are your monthlies? Do you have alimony and child support? Do you have other mortgages? Do you have other debts? Do you have re revolving debt? There's so many different types of income and liabilities. Then you also have, depending on the amount of assets, obviously IRA, you know, savings, checking, do you have stock that's not actually vested, but in the future it's gonna vest? And then you have all the liabilities. You know, did you buy a boat? Do you have a house? Do you have, you know, other things that you need? Not only that, you also have college debt. So you just list everything out. That is vitally important for two reasons, debt to income ratio, which we talked about, and post-closing liquidity, which we also talked about. So those are gonna be linked in the words right there. The biggest thing is, with those is that if and credit score as well you know credit score actually uh, we had a client that i just said we got to cl clean up your credit first before making an offer because it had a lot of things in the past it, you know they missed a couple of payments then it went into collections that dropped their credit score they were still rebuilding from that and i said you're not getting you're not getting the best rate and i don't even think a co-op is going to accept this because they're looking at it and they're saying well if they get money what do they do with it that's essentially what they're looking at. So, revenue financial form, a bank letter. If you're financing, you have to get a pre-approval letter. Have to, what, like what else are you gonna do? You know, go into an offer and they say, oh, I'm glad you're financing. Is someone gonna actually give you money? That's the biggest thing is there's two different ones, pre-qualification, pre-approval. They don't really call them those terms anymore, but one of them, pre-qualification, you know, whatever they call it now, I, priority letter, but they say, well, you told me you make, amount, you make this amount. You told me that your credit score is this amount and you have this amount and it's all verbal. There's, there's no documentation. But when you get the documentation, that's when a good priority letter comes through and they say, we're gonna lend you based on this and this and this. In other words, how much you make, how much debt and liabilities. Get a bank letter attorney. This is something that I'm going through literally right now, okay? So th this is the thing, is that people want to pay the least amount of money for your attorney. But this is the biggest portion and probably outside of the real estate agent, you're gonna be talking to the most, especially in the beginning. Do not skimp on your attorney. Make sure that attorney is a Manhattan-based real estate attorney. Manhattan, not Queens, Brooklyn, Bronx, Staten Island, New Jersey, Connecticut, Manhattan-based. And the reason being is that they don't really have co-ops in New Jersey or Connecticut that are as vicious as we are. And by we, I mean the co-ops in New York City, the financials, the litigation, the reserves. You know, do they have local law 11? Do they have any you know, litigation going on? Do they have scaffolding outside? How long is that gonna be there? Is an assessment coming up? Are they doing any work on the roof, the boiler, the elevator, the facade? There's so many things that go into the diligence of an attorney. And the other one is real estate base. There's a lot of people that they hire their, their, their real estate base or their Manhattan base, but he's personal injury. I have tons of attorneys, but they all hire a real estate based attorney. There's even within real estate, they have people that, that deal with co-op problems, that sue co-ops. They have people that have landlord issues and they that's all they do. They have estates, estate attorneys just for real estate. You want a Manhattan based transactional attorney that is in real estate. Fact, it will help you out. Obviously they charge more for the better ones, but I'm in a situation right now where the clients, I'm, list, I'm representing the owner, but the buyers are gonna lose because lose out on the, the deal because their attorney is not responding. They're, you know, it's the holidays, it doesn't really matter. The buyers wanna buy, they wanna sign the contract, sign the contract. Contingencies, so we'll just go through this really quickly. Contingency, if it's financing, obviously you have contingent on financing, you have not contingent on financing. So if you're not contingent on financing, that means that you are, your down payment, which is 10% of the purchase price, is at risk in case anything happens okay if you are contingent on financing there's multiple contingency there's a regular financing contingency there's a banker specific banker where you have to go to this banker there's a specific bank contingency sometimes where you go you can only use Wells Fargo or there is an appraisal contingency which means that as long as it appraises there's so many different types of contingencies there's there's the general financing contingency which is obviously the best one to protect a buyer but a lot of sellers they don't like that so talk to your agent about the contingencies you could write a letter okay write a letter and you know kind of introduce yourself an offer came in and they said hey listen it actually helped you know and especially on the listing side it humanizes the offer 
because most of the time you're looking at just black and you know black text on white paper and it says they will put in this offer they make this amount of money this is the price this is the contingency here's their attorney blah 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 and there is no hey listen we're going to buy it for a kid that's going to NYU and they're get super excited we're going to probably you know renovate the the hallway and open it up to the bedroom whatever you want to say and obviously introduce yourself and say I've been working at this company for a while you know they're great we're going to have great recommendation letters the last thing I want to say is buyer's remorse you know this could be a completely different video is buyer's remorse is massive okay a lot of people they get really excited they get into the buying process and then they get into the offer process and then at the end of the day they they call like I just had a call today and they said well actually we're not looking to buy so the best way to actually get around buyer's remorse while you're processing whether to buy or not is can I see myself in this home for five years the second thing is while you're in a home that you like you say how would I fix this home up what would I do where would I put my furniture can I see my my kid or my home business or entertaining can I see all of that happening here and if the answer is no you don't want to buy or you don't want to buy that home it's 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 all internal it all it just feels right that, that that's I always tell clients I'm like it just make sure it just feels right because a lot of people they they logically want to make the decision to say well it's close to work and blah 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 and I'm like but how do you feel do you feel like it's home do you feel like you can get away with not having as much sun can you get away with that it's a walk up or it's a loft that you can't really subdivide into different rooms so buyer's remorse is real there's also consequences if once you sign the contract so always understand that is there's you know obviously your 10 percent deposit which I know plenty of stories of people that have just said screw it the amount of money that I'm paying as opposed to when the new development is is done the pricing has gone down significantly in that actually I don't want to buy it for that amount I'm fine leaving my deposit on the table so I hope that helps if you guys have any questions obviously leave in the comments below we're gonna have a, a couple of things linked up so if you're not watching this on our blog go over there we have incredible amounts of resources we're always adding that in if you want to become a member on bpi.live there's forms and dis disclosures there's also guides you know buying guides listing guides there's just a huge amount of things buying townhouses 1031 if you're a foreign investor there's just a, a good amount of information there so if you guys have any questions have an amazing day talk to you guys soon